afternoon. Good afternoon. It's a magical time to be at Michigan. It's a magical time to be at Michigan. Well, those aren't my words. Those are the words of our first, uh, the keynote speaker of our first ever Health Professions Education Day a couple weeks ago. Coming from Johns Hopkins, she was so impressed with what's going on on our campus across the health professions, citing that she had seen really no other institution in the U.S. that was coming close to what we are doing as health professions collectively. Well, I'm here to say that it's an awesome time to be in the School of Dentistry. But you don't have to take my word for it. Let's see what our community has to say. I don't think I could have picked a better school. People always ask, why Michigan? It's one of the top programs in the country. Our reputation is built on a long-held tradition of advancing health through education, service, research, and discovery. The students here are among the best and brightest, and so it really makes it a lot easier to identify and ultimately mentor students. We get exposed to great faculty while we're here, so I feel very ready to take on pretty much anything. Healthcare of the future is going to be teamwork, and a big part of that's going to start in the school environments. We do something in Sim Lab, and it translates automatically into clinic. So skills that we're picking up from our mannequins, we're being able to apply them to our patients to overall strengthen our skills. The Pathways program is a unique opportunity for dental students to become engaged or involved in dental research. My research involves stem cells, and we're specifically looking at cell therapies for regenerating tissues. You're working on the future of dentistry. You can kind of see where it's going and then get to be a part of that, which I think is really cool. Yeah. We have faculty who are national leaders in various organizations. They are using this school as a springboard for us students to jump into future leadership positions. Michigan has been phenomenal in recruiting such students that you know, have a passion for research. We are constantly bringing different ideas, different pieces of information from our own experiences to the table to shape a more diverse opinion. We're conducting research on a product that's been used as a food preservative and we're using it as a new application for treatment of various oral diseases. As fourth year students, we do community outreach in different clinics. Most of these patients are underserved. It's rewarding that you know you're helping people who really need it. Connecting with patients is something that comes naturally to all of our residents. I really enjoy coming into the craniofacial clinic because these are the kids that really need orthodontic care and treatment. If you can help make that process more efficient or more comfortable for them, I think that's great. We develop leaders who will challenge the present and enrich the future. Yes, Michigan is known for the Michigan difference. I wouldn't expect anything less than the best. The whole reason I got into dentistry itself was so that I could make a positive difference in people's lives, and I'm really excited to start doing that right out of school. I'd like to thank people who were instrumental at in putting the video together, Sharon Graydon, Erica Hans, for all the people who are in the video and for all the people who actually were filmed for the video and didn't make it into the video because there was a lot of taping uh, to make that short three minute video. Let's talk about a snapshot, a 2015 snapshot of who we are, what we do, and how we do it. Our student body, 637 students are engaged in our School of Dentistry. The largest proportion are our dental students, 430 dental students. We have 86 bachelors of dental hygiene, 107 masters, 
and 14 PhD students. Our entering class of 2019, who started this summer, it was very competitive, nearly 18 applicants for every spot in the class, an average DAT score of 21, a GPA of nearly 3.6. You can see the split of males and females, a large proportion of residents uh, of Michigan. These students, highly engaged already in their curriculum, and as many of you know, are actually having a D1 dessert today to uh, engage the community. Our dental hygiene class, we have 78 entry-level bachelors of dental hygiene. We have distinctive programs in e-learning, both at the bachelor's degree completion level and the master's level. Our entering class of dental hygiene, 32, is probably the largest class that we've had in several years. And I would also just highlight that if any of you have not gone on to see the new website for dental hygiene, it's really amazing. So take uh, some time later on to check out their website. Our students are phenomenal. This is just an exampling of some of the achievements of our students. Tawak Metwali, who you see here, is right now at the National Institutes of Health. He's one of 54 students across the country who've taken a year to immerse themselves in research. Out of those 54 students, he's the only dental student in the country. It's pretty amazing. We typically max out the number of fellowships that we can obtain for our students from the American Association for Dental Research. Our Hispanic Dental Student Association won first prize this summer for their work in outreach, in education, in screening patients, in developing a video that would, uh, in Spanish, to educate patients. And they're highly engaged in opportunities to give back in the community. Every year, the graduating class, I meet with and ask them what they valued about their four years of dental school. And these are the four top things that they share with me. They value their faculty, and they give me beautiful examples of how their faculty go the extra mile and care about their education. They value their early clinic experiences. They get in, you know, you, you could imagine if you so wanted to be a dentist and it was so competitive to get into a program that they just really want to start engaging right from the get-go, and so they value those early clinic experiences. They value a personalized approach to education. Many of us know this as our Pathways program. They verbalize it just from the standpoint that they can carve out a niche of who they are professionally that tracks throughout their four years of dental school and likely beyond. And they value their outreach programs. We have 26 programs throughout the state of Michigan where our students spent eight weeks during their fourth year in dental school providing care to underserved populations. They love that step of independence towards their career. Our graduates right now in the state of Michigan, nearly 50% of the dentists practicing are graduates of the University of Michigan. And in the class that just graduated, 56% went on for further education, residency, uh, specialty programs. So they value uh, education. 36% of them into private practice, and nearly 10% chose community dentistry, public health, or the military, showing the value they have to engage in their communities. Last year, last academic year, I gave a snapshot profile to the Board of Regents of our unit, and they were particularly impressed with the caliber of our students. But one of the things they inquired about and were very uh, concerned about is the diversity in our student population. This graph shows our unit compared to all units on our campus. And if we look at faculty and staff, we are above the average in numbers of underrepresented minorities in the faculty and in our staff. 
It's not the same if we look at our undergraduate, which is our dental hygiene program, or graduate, which contains all of our dental students and our uh, master's and PhD students. So this is something that the regents and the provosts have challenged us to do better. We know there's a lot of influences about this, our profession, our engagement in, in various communities. But as you'll see in the strategic plan, it's something that we're taking very seriously. So let's talk about our faculty and our staff and our units. You all know we have five departments. Our five departments house all our faculty. We have 120 full-time faculty. Our adjunct faculty, extremely robust, nearly 400 faculty who, many of which volunteer their time, many others close to volunteering their time to uh, educate our students. We have 320 full-time staff, and that number has actually increased nearly 10% in the last five years. If we look at our instructional faculty relative to our student population, this is a busy uh, graph, but if you track the white bars, these are the student headcounts on this scale. And if you just look at the blue line, these are faculty FTEs. And so you can see over the uh, past few years, there was an increase in students and some leveling off. And our faculty numbers leveling and increasing. In fact, we've hired 15 new faculty in the last two years. That has rendered us a student to faculty ratio that is more favorable to students than it has been for more than 10 years. So we have a very robust student to faculty ratio. That's who we are. What do we do? We do patient care. We do a lot of it. We have over 180,000 patient visits in this building per year. Those are largely in our pre-doctoral clinics. You can see having the largest piece of this pie. The interesting thing is that we provide care to patients here from 81 out of 83 counties in the state of Michigan, which is pretty amazing when you think it takes 11 hours to drive to uh, parts of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. And we take our patient care seriously. We do research, and we do research extremely well. We typically are in the top five of all dental schools for the amount of funding that we have from the National Institutes of Health and the National Institute of Dental and Craniofacial Research. We publish 277 papers per year. That's nearly one per workday. I know you all read all those, right? We can, if we each read one paper per day, we can get there. We have our four research foci, craniofacial, skeletal biology and disease, cancer. We have a tissue engineering foci and a clinical population education foci. Nearly 19 or over 19 million dollars in expenditures per year. So a very robust research enterprise. And our faculty are world renowned. These are just a few recent examples. Our former dean, Pete Palverini, was elected as a distinguished university professor, the first individual from the School of Dentistry to ever be recognized with this university level recognition. Dr. Joe Hellman, in fact, today is receiving this award, the Presidential Achievement Award from the American Association of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgeons. We have Christiane Squareasy, who was one of two dentists to receive a Robert Wood Johnson Fellowship. Peter Ma, who received fellowship in the Materials Research Society. And Eugene Koh, accepted into the Faculty Scholars Program in Integrative Healthcare. We could go on and on. These are just a few of the accolades. How do we do this? Well, we have a strong, a robust financial base to drive our operations. Uh, in October, our Director of Budget and Finance, Mike Fox, is going to give an over, a more detailed overview of the budget uh, for the faculty. But you can see, just looking at generally at the pie, our general funds are our largest source 
of revenue in, a, in our budget. And that is, stems from student tuition and fees, a provost allocation, and indirect re cost recovery. Next are our designated funds. These are our clinics, pre-doctoral clinics, graduate clinics, continuing education. Our sponsored research, a robust 17% of our overall budget, and auxiliary funds, which are our faculty practice and core facilities in the school. This is what drives what we do. And what do we spend all this on? You can see this here, fiscal year 15 expenses. This is basically the same pie chart I showed you in the last slide now with dollars on it. But what you can see here is our expenses are largely people in our building. Faculty, staff, salaries, and benefits. A huge piece of this pie. And then the next supplies and financial aid. These are our financial drivers. Along with the financial aspects, I would be remiss to not highlight that we are in the midst of a capital campaign, $35 million target. We have an amazing development office uh, led by Rich Fetchett, who is overseeing this. We are well on target. The campaign is about halfway over. We're at 51% towards our goal right now. You can see our annual giving over 4 million. We have incredibly dedicated, generous alumni and friends of our unit who give on an annual basis to uh, various efforts in the school. But the key things in the campaign are student scholarships and building renovation. Those are the top two priorities for our campaign. So now that is a snapshot of kind of quickly who we are right now in 2015. I want to talk to you about where we're going. And where we're going has been built by all of us. Together, we've established our strategic plan and outlined where we want to go for the future. This is a strategic plan that started with a committee that was represented by faculty, staff, students, co-chaired by Lynn Johnson and Tracy D. Peralta, a committee that met in a dedicated manner on a weekly basis, a committee that reached out many times through many portals and efforts to engage all of you in the community, as well as those outside the community to inform our directions going forward. So I just want to share with you, remind you what our goals are, and share with you our progress on the goals and how, what we're doing moving forward. We have five domains in our strategic plan, a people domain, education, research discovery, patient care, responsible growth and development. And these five domains are headed by domain stewards, as you'll see as I go through them on the slides. These domains sit not on their own. They sit in close relationship with the leadership in the school, the executive committee, and informed by all of us as stakeholders by our faculty, by our staff, and by our students and alumni. A very fluid interaction between the domains and our community. So let's start with the people domain. And as you'll see on these slides, the stewards for our domains will be highlighted on the lower right. The people domain stewards, Todd Esther and Will Ginoble. So the goals for the people domain were to increase diversity over the next five years and to foster a development, professional development for everybody in our unit to be successful, to be in an environment that was conducive to their professional success. Along those lines, there's been several diversity initiatives set forward, and I would just say that one of the goals was to have at least 300 contacts with pre-dental students. And as you can see, that goal has already been surpassed more than twofold, with 642 contacts with pre-dental students. 
Another goal was to reestablish our Profiles for Success program, a program that engages our uh, individuals in the community who are thinking about dentistry, helping them to prepare to be successful in their careers. And in fact, this program was reinstituted in 2015, and so that goal was accomplished. The other, to develop this workplace that would be consistent with us being comfortable and being successful. And along those lines, one of the goals in the people domain was to do a climate survey. And this was done in conjunction with Dr. Carol Ann Murdoch Kinch's office and the Curtis Center in uh, the School of Social Work. The thing that I thought was really very cool about the climate study was we've done two other climate studies. And if you look at the number of respondents in 1994 versus 2007 versus 2014, you can see our community really came together to provide input in this. And to me, that is a very strong statement that the community wants to engage. The recommendations from the climate study have gone forward in town halls, and you'll continue to see them rolling out. Uh, uh, the key aspects to increase diversity of staff, faculty, and students, increase resources to foster an inclusive environment, improve communications across the school. And in fact, this state of the school address is one effort to try and increase communications. Recommendations over here, internal cultural sensitivity training that has already started with some student groups and will continue to develop think tanks for people to, uh, to work through opportunities and pathways going forward, to create a clear and safe place to report microaggressions, and again, to increase the diversity of the faculty and staff. A couple more success stories. I mentioned to you that the PFS program was reinstituted this year. One of the wonderful outcomes is that all six of the participants submitted applications to dental school and submitted them early, showing that they were well prepared and engaged. So they have all applied to the University of Michigan. They've also applied to other dental schools. So uh, we'll be excited to see how that pans out. We received a generous donation from an alum to support this program, a $75,000 donation. And other alumni are now stepping up to match this donation to support this valuable program. In addition, we asked the university, because of the interest in increasing and making more robust the diversity in our unit, if they would support our ability to provide financial aid to our students. And they stepped up and provided $200,000 to us to uh, increase our financial support of students. And I already mentioned to you the success in our Hispanic student uh, dental student group. So moving forward, a few things on uh, the, the list for the people domain. Todd Esther has been asked to participate on a university-wide academic affairs committee for diversity. He's in charge of our school's diversity strategic plan. Every unit on our campus is now tasked to develop their own diversity strategic plan, which will feed into the university's strategic plan. And we are in an excellent position to do this, especially with the information that we have uh, from the climate study and the efforts that we've already, uh, the momentum that we already have with our strategic plan people domain. And we also have a climate study implementation committee that will be meeting to move forward climate study results. There's so many people to thank for the work that's been done in the people domain, but a subset here and I would like to specifically highlight um, a, a couple people, Cheryl Quinney and Henry Temple, who co-chair our MAC committee, because that is a really instrumental group 
in our unit for continuing the visibility in this area. And I also have to give a shout out to Renee Duff because she is really the guardian of our students. And I had a lunch with the three students a couple weeks ago and they just went on and on about uh, how much they admired and respected uh, Renee for her assistance in tough times and uh, in good times as well. So let's move to the education domain. Our goal is in education to have students demonstrate critical thinking during patient care. Critical thinking during patient care. And to audit the curriculum to determine where critical thinking occurs across our curriculum. And as you know, our curriculum is quite complex and quite large. First, the education domain had to define what critical thinking was. And we just highlight the education domain, Carol Ann Murdoch Kinch and Steve Bain. Their definition has three parts, an attitude of addressing problems in a thoughtful manner, the knowledge of the methods, and the skill in applying these methods. So having the definition was the prerequisite to do this audit, which they've now done, and identified critical thinking in eight different teaching methods, in all 12 OSCE stations for D4s, in all clinical test cases in treatment planning and restorative dentistry, and in OSCEs in ortho and pediatric dentistry. A few examples of success in the education domain, anecdotal ones. Uh, Allison Everett, who worked with Margarita Fontana and presented at the American Dental Education Association on competency assessment. Renee Ishmael, who uh, developed as also as a Pathways Project, the Case of the Month uh, project, and was invited and presented at CRLT on campus, her project. D3 student Brandon Churchman, who identified a patient with atrial fibrillation and, and, and made sure to uh, find a pathway for that patient to have uh, medical care. And our faculty are stepping up and engaging more and more in evidence-based dentistry in their courses. And one example is a Albert Chan in uh, one of his courses. Moving forward, the education domain will be mapping critical thinking skills across the disciplines and vertically through the curriculum. They'll be engaging in uh, identifying software to identify clinical competency, an EBD faculty champion in each department, and these five EBD champions will develop the rubrics to assure uh, clinical critical thinking occurs. Special thanks in the education domain. You can see here, and I would just like to give a shout out to Farat George, who was part of the initial clinical uh, uh, competency assessment team to develop treatment planning and patient care rubrics. He also uh, very generously stepped up to serve as an interim VICS director when one of his colleagues uh, had to uh, step out of the school temporarily. And he continues to work towards accreditation for competency assessment in implants. Also would like to highlight Vidya Ramaswamy, who if any of you have worked with her, just know she's absolutely phenomenal in the education arena and has been so instrumental in, at the underpinnings in the educational domain. Research. Our domain stewards in research, Russ Teichman and Paul Krebsbaugh, have really an aspirational goal that all our faculty who are research intensive should have major funding within a few short years after they are hired onto faculty. And one of the goals that they have set into place is to assure that all the junior faculty have mentors to be able to do this. And that we participate in opportunities on our campus, like our advanced launch program. And we now have three faculty that are in advanced launch teams on our campus that are mentoring teams to assure uh, guidance towards success. 
to be able to accomplish those uh, research projects, there's a lot of support that's being put into place. Pre-submission of grants, reviewed by peers, study coordinator assistance for clinical studies through uh, uh, efforts by Bob Eber, support for collaborative research, and for the first time, our unit is able to participate in the medical school R01 boot camp for our faculty to engage. Success stories, well, this is uh, just a scan of new project awards over the last year, okay? This is not all our awards. This is just newly awarded projects. And I just want to highlight two of them because they think they epitomize what we are looking for, which is collaborative grants where faculty from two different disciplines come together and put their expertise together to have something that is synergistic and, and results in something greater. And so those two are an R01 by Chris Fenno and uh, Yvonne Capilla. Chris bringing forward his expertise in the molecular biology of spirochetes and T. denicola, and Yvonne Capilla, her expertise in extracellular matrix and fibronectin and clinical periodontal disease came together for a grant proposal on host effect defense mechanisms that was funded uh, this year. The other one is also a collaborative grant between Dave, uh, co PI'd by Dave Cohn and Will Ginoble. And this is a, a bit of a different grant. It's to establish a center, a Michigan Center for Regenerative Medicine, to translate animal studies into clinical studies. And it's the first phase of a multi-phased uh, project that will engage numerous people in our unit across campus and also reach out to uh, industrial partners. So moving forward, uh, there is a, a mentoring plan that resides now in the department level for all faculty with a goal that not only the junior faculty have mentoring opportunities, but all faculty uh, have the option, uh, ability to have mentorship. Uh, the Office of Research has put forward a new initiative, Collision Science. Many of you may have participated in that event. It is a mode to try and ignite people to work together from different areas. And there is funding support once people initiate a project that they can further that momentum. And M cubed two. So M cubed one, our unit looked fantastic in M cubed one. We had high engagement in it. And M cubed two is now rolling out. And uh, there'll be plenty of opportunities for our faculty to yet again engage in M cubed two. Special thanks here. Um, and I just give a shout out to Charlotte Mistretta, who was instrumental at the initial stages in the strategic plan in the research domain and has remained steadfast at assisting with uh, evaluation of documentation, uh, for instance, for the mentoring document. And Sarah, who uh, in the Office of Research, and backed by that entire office, which is just amazing, at rolling out the Collision Science Initiative. So thank you. Patient care. Well, as I said to you before, over 180,000 patient visits per year. 25% of our expenditures in our school around patient care. We had this aspirational thought that we want to exceed our patients' expectations. And so our domain stewards, Steve Stefanik and Grant Ward, um, have taken really clear and measurable goals set out for this, looking at patient satisfaction by survey and with a goal of improving our patient satisfaction experiences. All of you in this room can help to uh, affect these scores. Reducing wait times for appointments and pays and reducing time for treatment to be completed for patients. And so these are their uh, goals and some early successes that they've had. Patient satisfaction score of 4.25, which exceeded what they initially set out for, for both new and returning maintenance patients in 2015. 
a 21% increase in patients screened, 12% increase in appointment slots in PAYS, and a reduction in patient wait time by 25%. Another success story, people with patient serv in patient services working with the people in IT to look at data management systems that can better affect decision making in the area of patient care. And this is, I'm told, a tornado plot, which basically they can look down. I know it's in small print, but like every clinic in the school is listed here. And they can get a readout by uh, whether our appointments are canceled or fulfilled in each of these units to identify areas that were uh, clinics that are doing particular well and ones that are having the potential challenges. And this is a, a system called Tableau, real-time data. They've also, in response to feedback in the public forums for our strategic plan, uh, have placed a greeter at the front door of the school. But I'm here to tell you that all of us have a responsibility to be greeters to our patients as they navigate through the building. So I hope those of you who see patients always smile and ask them if they uh, need help getting through the building. Moving forward, their goals are to tackle cancellation wait rates, to initiate a word of mouth campaign for people on our campus uh, in the checkup clinic, and to improve the patient services website and determine why some patients may come initially and then decide to discontinue care. So getting a better feel and a pulse on our patient population. Special thanks here goes to the uh, PAYS clinic staff, the appointment office staff, who are often the first people to see patients come into the building. And I have to also give a shout out to Bonnie Dawson. Uh, Bonnie uh, deals with all the patient concerns in the building. It's 180,000 patient vi visits. You know, that might be one or two people who might show up in her office. <laughs> she deals with them with respect and um, is really uh, fabulous at her uh, interactions with patients. Our last category, responsible growth and sustainability, and here our initial goals was to be transparent. The underpinning of this is that if we all understand better how our finances are driven, determined, that we can be better stewards, all of us, of our resources. And so, a more transparent financial reporting system and to engage all of us as stakeholders. And so one of the goals that uh, our domain steward, Mike Fox and uh, Sunil Kapila did was to put information out there in survey form and, and to, to evaluate the community before and after having data to see how their knowledge about our finances uh, changed. They did three surveys on the topics of clinic operations, research operations, and overall finances, and overall saw a 17% improved understanding in our finances in the school. The other initiative that Mike has done to, to facilitate transparency is to share what uh, we call our commitment log with the department chairs and the executive committee in the school. And basically what this is, is any money that's been allocated towards initiatives centrally in the school is now totally open for uh, chairs and the executive committee to review, comment, uh, make suggestions on. The other kind of fun uh, story about sustainability, and this is a student, uh, Shivani Kamodia, who has engaged in a sustainability project. This is her Pathways project with Steve Stefanik. And she has identified a huge amount of waste in the preclinic. And this just shows, I think she did an audit uh, last week. She's sitting out here in the audience. She can correct me if I'm wrong, like 750 some gloves that uh, were thrown away after a preclinic exam. And she's helping her students be more responsible with their use. So if you've used gloves, to consider recycling them and to be more uh, thoughtful about
glove usage, mask usage uh, in the preclinic. A lot of cool things going on. So moving forward, building on our transparency gains, identifying initiatives to generate revenues is kind of the next step. And uh, we've already developed an ad hoc committee chaired by Sharon Graydon to look at better marketing to our community on campus, our patient care services in the building. And here I just, uh, there's several people to thank in this area, but I want to give a special shout out to Shelly Krebs, who is just, I've learned, amazing at data analysis, collection, and presentation. And Marge Venema, who uh, not only knows her finances extremely well, but has an amazing institutional knowledge of uh, this place, remembering how things happened 10 years ago, 20 years ago, uh, which is particularly valuable. So, in case those of you thought that I was going to talk all day today about the building, that's next week. <laughs> so this is just a teaser to say that uh, on October 6th, we will have an update about the building of the school. And uh, suffice it to say, we have gotten through what's called the first phase of the building, which is a conceptual phase. And so we'll be sharing that with you. Um, the other key thing is the finance support, which we're still waiting to have any final word from the state about uh, partial funding of our project. And so that is still up in the air. But here I want to just stop and also thank uh, Sharon Graydon and Ken Rieger for their assistance in graphics for the presentation today. And just end with this quote, coming together is a beginning, keeping together is progress, working together is success. And thank all of you for working together for the success of the school. With that, I will take questions. And I think we do have mics if people have questions. Don't be shy. Any surprises? Tony. Um, when it comes to like, the research programs, I know I spoke with Dr. Oh, I don't want to do that. And I'm just, you know, prepping you stewards out here. I may, any, any domain questions are going to be turf to you. Okay. I, I know I spoke with Dr. Tashman a while back. Hi, Dr. Tashman. Is there avenues or is there certain websites or numbers when we get calls from patients, usually on a collection aspect, but that are interested in research programs? Is there anything out there that can help save costs, no costs? Is there, is there some avenue we can give them? So what you're asking about are potential clinical research studies. Mm -hmm. So Bob or Russ, I would ask one of you. Bob, you want to address that? Right now, it would be, they would, they would contact Tina Lucas in our office. Oh, sorry. You were, I was right. And is Tina here? Uh, all the way in the back. Do you know T she just, Tina? Know yeah. Tina. Okay, that was great. <laughs> Other questions? If I walk up the aisle and tap on somebody. <laughs> no questions here in the back? Okay, uh, we got a question. I knew if I waited long enough and didn't, <laughs> and, and guarded the back door. <laughs> uh, I, could you give us a brief explanation about collision science and what exactly that is? Yes, I will, I will give you the very brief one and then hand it over to Russ. The collision science um, basically builds on our four research themes. And people came together in the research themes to facilitate basically 
existing knowledge that they had or existing data that could be worked together for a collaborative project. And, and I think the example that I gave of Chris Fenno and, and Yvonne is a perfect example of that. That didn't happen by that mechanism. It happened naturally, but we're trying to facilitate that. And Russ? Right, so what I would add to that is that what we're trying to do is incentivize rather than leave it on the backs of faculty to do it by themselves. So give them a, a, a goal so that they can begin to build projects together and then get them out the door, number one. And number two, we've had on paper these different areas of research that we're engaged in and different strengths, but we're trying to breathe some life into that. And so we're doing the collision science initiatives in collaboration with these different research strengths. Does that help? Question in the back. I just want to add to that, more information will be available via my tools in the research section by Monday regarding the collision science events. Not events, but um, initiatives. Okay. The other, the video will be available when? So. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So any of you who are out and about and want to uh, highlight things in the school, feel free to use the video. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming. And um, if you have other questions you are afraid to ask, send me an email. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>